Nice. That intro was actually super nice. First time that I saw it. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. This is the first live stream that I do on 2024. Yay. Happy to be here. Um, and I'm very excited because I'm actually streaming on YouTube. It's been a while that we haven't done this, that we haven't done technical live streams to talk about enhancing your Webflow skills with additional skills. Um, and we're doing it live here on YouTube. So very happy to see everyone. I don't have two screens, so you'll probably see me doing kind of looking at my phone and, <laughs> and looking at my screen at the same time because I'm looking at the comments right in here. But I'm already seeing a lot of activity. I'm super happy to have you all guys, all you guys here. Nice. OK, I'm going to say do a quick round of shout outs to everyone who's here. And then we'll just jump right into it because we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. OK, great. We've got two. Hey, Row Rover. OK, nice. WWW, uh, WWX Stack Developer, nice to see you. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Matias. Oh, wow. Hey, Verdi. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Darshale. Nice. I'm loving this. I'm seeing a lot of people who usually come to the Fintu Plus sessions. So I love to see, you know, um, uh, is the word common faces? Not, not, the, not that word. Just seeing um, familiar faces. That's the word. I'm happy. Hey, Super Chai Studio. Hey, Poison. Nice. Good to see you guys. OK. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Go Pineup. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. If you're joining today, it means that you want to improve how you build Webflow sites. It doesn't matter. Maybe just you're maybe just joining for the topic of today, which is going to be HTMX. We'll introduce that in a second. Or maybe just because you want to just get more technical. You want to get, uh, learn more skills. You want to take your sites to the next level. And that's our goal. Hopefully, by the end of this year, you'll be a pro um, next to us. OK, greetings from London. Greetings from Spain here. Great. OK. Um, you know what? We've, we, we are already more than 60 people. Do you, do you think that we're going to um, reach the 100? Mark, <laughs> I would love that. Gabe, do we have a some kind of celebration or sound if we reach the 100 mark? I would love that. Get more technical. Yeah, Sylvan, that's the goal. OK, great. So let me do a quick intro. As I said before, today is the first live stream that we're doing of our technical live streams. The past year, in 2023, it was mostly done by uh, just private live streams with the FinSuite Plus users. Okay, So we've got the FinSuite Plus community, which is a community that you can join right now if you want to, um, where we just provide some quality content. We, we provide some additional services with the, with the whole FinSuite team. And the technical live streams was a part of that service. That's not going away. Okay. In 2024, we have a new approach. The plan is that we're going to be mixing both open technical live streams like we're doing today. And this is on YouTube. Everyone can assist. Everyone can see it. And then we're going to keep doing the technical live streams with the Fincy Plus users with some minor differences. When we do these open live streams, it's going to be a bit more broad speaking. So we're going to talk about a topic, but we're not going to go super in depth in details, building a super complex project and maybe just, you know, getting a lot of feedback from the from from the people and trying to to address um, all the different questions that you have. Although I'm going to be answering everything that I can. Don't worry. Um, but the Fincy Plus sessions are going to be dedicated specially for that. When we know a bit of the global topic, then we can jump even go even deeper and more more um, specific, more advanced topics inside the, the topic that we're discussing. Okay, And we pro we're probably going to be uh, mixing. So maybe we do one open live stream, and then we do a couple Fincy Plus live streams, and then we're going to switch topics and do another live stream, et cetera. Okay? We're going to keep 
um, informing you about this. We always send out emails so you can subscribe to our, our newsletter if you want to, or you can follow us in social media so you know exactly um, what you can expect and when it's going to be live. Okay. That being said, everything that is done with the Fintu Plus users always is released after a while in YouTube. The only downside if, is that it's not live. So if you need some, you know, some live feedback from me, if you want to share something, then that belongs to the FinSuite Plus sessions. Okay, great. That being said, I am going to start sharing my screen because we can start talking about the topic of the day. Are you guys excited? Let me, hold on, let me check the comments for a second. There's already people asking me to do a dance. <laughs> I can. I'm already dancing of excitement. Okay, I see more and more people. Hello, everyone that I haven't shout out to yet. Um, great. So, Gabe, can you confirm, are we sharing screens? I think we are. So I think that we're good. And this screen is the htmx.org site. This is what we're gonna be talking about today, okay? HTMX, what the hell is it, right? Let's just check for a second the introduction of the site so we can get quite a bit of, you know, some grasp of it, and then we'll go deep into it. You can see I have quite a lot of things that I wanna share today here that can help you take your Webflow site and take it to the next level, okay? so. HTMX, it's just a library, okay? It's a library that gives you access to AJAX, CSS transitions, web sockets, and server side events directly in HTML using attributes. So you can build modern user interfaces with the simplicity and power of hypertext, hypertext, okay? Let's, let's analyze this, like what the hell is going on here? So essentially, when you want to build interactivity on your site, maybe when you want to build a custom experience or you're on your site, usually you need a lot of JavaScript, right? Um, it, could be just vanilla JavaScript. It could be some um, some framework like React, Valve, Vue, etc. It could be something like uh, Wist, which is kind of low code because it expects you to also write a bit of JavaScript. Or you can just go with a full attribute-based approach. You may already know things that maybe some um, ring a bell, like FinSuite attributes, right? FinSuite attributes is essentially one library that we have at FinSuite, it's fully open for everyone, that allows you to implement functionalities on a static site, on an HTML site, by just adding, sprinkling a bunch of HTML attributes, right? So you can take, for example, and you can build a full filtering system, like I'm gonna show you now if it loads here, by just sprinkling some attributes. This whole site here, it's built using attributes, okay? So this same mentality that goes of sprinkling, enhancing your site with some functionalities without even requiring using some JavaScript, it's what powers HTMX, okay? So it provides you with AJAX, CSS transitions, um, updating, interacting with the, with the page directly with just attributes, okay? And we're gonna deep dive into that in a second. Okay, great. If you have any questions, by the way, just drop them here in the comments and I'll try to address them. You can, you, you'll can, you see me just um, looking up and down because I have my comments here, but um, anytime that I can do a pause, I'll just go through the comments and, and answer everything, okay? Great. To do this, I'm not just gonna be talking, I'm going to be building with you. So um, it's gonna be uh, rather basic because we, we need to go over the basics first of the framework, but I'm going to be showing you what are the most basic things that you can do with it and give you some ideas. Um, and we're going to be doing that together. Okay. So HTMX, as I mentioned, it's something that it's attribute based. And the thing is that it empowers HTML first. Okay. Which means that everything that you build starts with the foundation of HTML. When you use other approaches, like maybe using React um, as, as your fr uh, JavaScript framework, usually HTML is not the first thing. The base of everything is JavaScript. You've got a full engine that builds the HTML for you, ships it to the site, and then mutates the site. Everything is based on the JavaScript that, we're, that you're building. In this case, the structure, the base thing, it's going to be HTML. It's going to be your site, which 
if you notice, because we are Webflow developers, this is pretty convenient for us, right? Because in Webflow, when you're building a site, Webflow essentially spits two things. It spits HTML and it spits CSS. That's it. Maybe also it includes a bit of JavaScript if you're sprinkling some interactions or maybe you have some built-in components like a tabs component or a slider component. But mostly what comes out of a Webflow site is just HTML. That's it. Anything that you want to build on top of it, you have to take care of it with some tool, with some JavaScript, with WEST, with attributes, or in this case, with HTMX. Okay? Great. So HTML first, attribute based, and then Ajax is one of the bases of HTMX. Okay? Then let's just jump into the principles of how um, a basic setup of HTML works. Uh, not HTML, sorry, <laughs> HTMX works. Okay? So, um, by the way, I'm going to be kind of following the docs because I've, I've been preparing this content based on their documentation. So you can always go more in depth by just reading the docs. But let's go here. So usually when you work with a platform, okay, and when, when I talk about working with a platform, what I really mean is just using the browser as it was originally intended to. Right? When you build a site that just has HTML and CSS, there are a few things that you can do with that site. You can navigate around because you have links, right? you have A tags. You can submit data to a server with forms. You can input the data inside that form with inputs, etc. Okay? You have, there are a few things that are baked already into the browser, into the HTML language, that allow you to just exp expose something to the user and interact with it. Okay? So, with the browser, when just using the platform, what usually happens is that when you submit a form, when you navigate, when you click a link, etc., the process is that the browser performs a request to the server, the server responds to, uh, uh, provides a response, and then the browser just reloads the site, right? And this happens if I'm, for example, here, and I click in here, or maybe here like that okay what's just happening when i do this is essentially i am creating a request because i'm clicking on a link the server which in this case it's webflow because it's what's providing this site the server responds with a new html um, doc and essentially what happens is that the browser navigates it destroys the old page and it reloads it loads the new page on top of it like that that's it, very simple, right? But we can enhance that a bit. And that's why uh, you probably hear me talk about a bit of progressive enhancement, which means that essentially we take something that already exists on the platform, on the browsers, but we enhance it a bit more with some additional tools that help us build more interactive um, experiences. So with HTMX, it's gonna be a very similar approach for everything. We're gonna perform a request, we're going to get a response, but instead of reloading the entire site, we're going to be replacing the content, okay? And this small difference actually makes a huge difference because replacing will allow us to just update some bits of the page based on the inputs that the server got. That's it, okay? So if we just start drawing a bit, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make everything as um, visual as possible today. So imagine that this is the browser, like that, okay? And we've got a site, like this, and we've got another site, okay? First, when the browser loads, what happens is that the browser requests that site and just, boom, reloads the entire page and puts that HTML document in here, okay? When you navigate, when you click on a, on a link, for example, like that, what's gonna happen is that the entire thing is destroyed. And then it brings the new page and replaces everything, it reloads the page, okay? But with HTMX, what's gonna happen is a bit more different. We're gonna have, imagine, some A tag like that in here. It could be an A tag, it could be any element, you'll see it in a second, it can be a form, okay? And maybe we don't want to reload the entire page, we just want to update some bits. Maybe here we have, I don't know, like a list of to-dos, and inside the list of to-dos, we have a bunch of to-dos like that, 
um, maybe it's going to be each one of these is a, nope, not like that, like that. Each one of these is a to do, boom, boom, boom. So the first thing is that maybe instead of loading an entire page, we just want to load this specific part, right? We just want to load the to do's of that page. So it's the match. What's going to do is instead of doing the the old approach that I showed you before, it's going to know that we are targeting a specific part of the page. It's going to say, "Hey, in this empty div that we have here, imagine that this is an empty div. Going to get rid of all of that. In this empty div, I want you to grab something, and instead of reloading the entire page, I want you to dump it inside in here, like that. Okay, and maybe each each of these to dos." Maybe when we want to update, imagine that we want to change the, the content of a to-do, or we want to delete a to-do, or we want to do anything on the page. Instead of updating the entire page, we're going to say, hey, I've got a new version of the to-do. So when I submit the form, imagine that here I've got a form. When I submit a form, I want you to grab the new version of the to-do and just put it in here. Boom. That's it. OK? So with this very um, you know, simplistic explanation that I'm doing. It's essentially what's powering the entire um, HTMX mentality. We're using the platform, we're kind of doing the same things that the browser provides, but enhancing them by just saying, being more specific. Hey, instead of reloading the entire page, grab me this and put it in there, okay? Now, if you're um, kind of already trying to come up with ideas of things that you need and that you can build with it, you probably noticed that if we are doing something that returns the new data, okay, this something has got to come from somewhere, right? It's, it's not like we can make it up. With JavaScript, usually, when you're writing a lot of code, you have full control of things. So you can take a DOM node, you can clone it, you can populate it again, you can do multiple things. But in here, HTMX um, empowers you, it encourages you to move most of this logic to a server, okay? Meaning that we're going to have a server, but that server, instead of returning the, the traditional JSON responses, we're just giving you some data, that server is going to be expected to return the HTML, so the new bits that we want to inject on the site. Okay? So instead of maybe loading the entire page, as I said before, imagine that this is the entire page, the server is going to be the one in charge of knowing, hey, OK, the site is requesting a new to-do. So I'm just going to generate this HTML here, because then it's TMX. The library will know that it just needs to grab this and put it in the on the old place. Okay, but we're going to see that in a second, because we really don't need a server for everything. We have a few use cases to enhance our Webflow site by just sprinkling a bunch of HTMX attributes. Okay, so we are going to start in a second. But before I do that, let's just go over all the comments. Okay, and. I know that it's a bit rude because I'm here kind of like checking my phone. Again, I'm just looking at the comments <laughs> because then I don't have two screens, okay? Okay, great. Um, thank you for doing this. Thank you all guys for being here. Nice. Okay. Himansu. Hey, Himansu. Good to see you. Sends edge attributes. Is there a potential to use this with WIST? Maybe in a feature, WIST can ask to select the development mode. Vanilla equals to WIST attributes only. Vanilla plus HTMX equals to WIST with, uh, plus HTMX attributes. You can totally mix uh, with an HTMX. It's not a tool that it's um, exclusive, that can only be used um, exclusively itself. Um, even the, the, the creators of HTMX, they empower you to use more tools in combinations with HTMX, OK? HTMX is very good for um, enhancing the platform, especially around data fetching and showing the data on the site. But then if you're looking to build more interactive experiences, imagine that, I don't know, you want to have some kind of um, drag and drop system where you can click on elements, they open a model, and then when opening the model, depending on the, the content that you're populating on that model, you want to conditionally display different elements, etc. When you're starting to build highly interactive experience, you need to start mixing other solutions with, it, with HTMX, okay? HTMX is just going to provide you it's just, it's actually quite a big deal, but it's going to provide you to enhancing some of the base functionalities of a browser, which is 
loading data, dumping the data um, with some additional features that we'll talk about in a second. But if you want to get more and more and more interactive, then you have to build customer experience pairing with HTMX. You can do that with Benly JavaScript. You can do it with other um, frameworks like Alpine.js, for example. You can do it with WIST. Absolutely, everything pairs pretty well, okay? So we're gonna talk about that if we have enough time. Okay, and Demetrius is actually saying, this reminds me of Barba.js, and it kind of does, because Barba.js uses a bit of these concepts also to empower the, the client-side routing. In fact, you can do the same with HTMX, okay? If we have enough time, again, Oh my God, because we've been already 20 minutes in and I want to talk about a lot of things. But if we have enough time, um, you will probably see how you could even replace entirely Barba.js by just HTMX if you wanted to, okay? Okay, great. For a no-code developer that has uh, mainly just used CSS, HTML, and attributes, would be, uh, this be the best next step for a learning curve? I'm going to say that yes, until um, except if you need some com kind of custom functionality, because you're going to see that in a second. Many functionalities that we can build with HTMX that are very powerful require a dedicated server for that. Okay. Again, we'll see that. So for now, let's just go over the basics because then you're you're going to understand what the hell is going on with this, and then we can talk about more and more um, specific use cases. But again, I, I have a list here of things that you could do with it, but progressive enhancement, just improving the experience on the side. You could build custom content. You could build dashboards. You could build um, um, custom content that is coming from kind of third-party API. You could build some systems like favoriting or portals for your clients. You could uh, do things that pair with Webflow CMS because as we said, the base of HTMX is using the HTML of the site, and Webflow CMS already spits out HTML pages. You could do um, anything that is interactive with the form, like you could do calculators or showing ta tailor results or voting systems, mutating things on the page based on some user inputs, whatever. These kind of things can be done with HTMX, okay? So let's stop talking for a bit and let's just start building things, okay? Because when I start, I never stop. So installing, it's just as simple as just grabbing a script tag and dumping it on your Webflow site. That's it, okay? If you're gonna be writing custom JavaScript, then you probably wanna go with the NPM package solution. But today, because I'm just going over the basics, we're gonna work with the script tag, okay? This script tag, you can find it right in here, okay? In the documentation of HTMX, if you go to installing, you have here all the different approaches that you can use to install it. So I'm gonna just grab this, and I actually think that I had this already in place. I do. Cool. Okay, so I've got my client first um, template, just a new project, okay? By the way, if you didn't know it, we released a new version of the client first template. I think that just a week ago, that includes some updates around improving using client first with variables, okay? Maybe you wanna check it out. Great, so I've built some things ahead because I don't wanna spend a lot of time building in Webflow, but we're gonna show you how to implement HTMX on top of this. So let's go over the basics. Everything that I told you about in here of um, listening when something is changing, sending a request to a server, getting a response, populating it. All of these require some um, instructions that we have to give to HTMX, okay? So these instructions are gonna be some basic attributes. These are some of the core attributes that are used. And let's start by just doing, uh, using the HX method. You can see how all the attributes are prefixed with HX. I believe that you can also use, if you prefer it, you can use data like this, but Usually in the documentation, you will find it as this HX method. This method can be any HTTP method, okay? So this can be get, it can be post, it can be put, it can be delete, and it can be patch, like that, okay? So any of these methods, it means that we're gonna be doing a request to the endpoint that we provide with this method, okay? The concept is that when we do a request, so I'm gonna come here. When we do a request, let's draw a bit. When we do a request, 
HTMX is going to go to the server, it's going to grab the contents, and by default, it's going to dump the contents inside the element that requested those contents. So imagine that I have this element in here, okay? And I want to, when clicking on this element, I want to populate something inside this element. What I want to populate of this element, it's on a server, or it could be on a different Webflow page. In this case, I'm going to be using a Webflow page. You'll see it in a second. And I just want to grab that and put it inside here. Okay. So what we can do is say hx get, for example, because we want to do a get HTTP method. And in the value, we want to provide a URL that points to the new page, to the new resource that is the, the, the HTML document that I want to put inside here. Okay, sounds a bit confusing, but let's just check the, the project. So in this project, I've built this folder called API, okay? And inside API, we've got this components page. All these namings are because I just came up with them. It's not required. But in here, in this components page, I just built a few components. And these components are gonna be something, you know, just as an example, I wanna work with them. So I've got this ta-da element in here. This data element is what I want to grab from this page. So I want to come in this page, get the HTML of this page, and I want to grab this ta-da element and put it back in here, OK? So we're just going to say hx get. And then we're going to type, it can be a relative URL if you're using the same domain, or it could be an absolute URL. But in this case, it's going to be slash API, API slash components, like that. Let's not talk any. Uh, let's not say anything else. Let's just publish this. Let's check what it happens, and then we can analyze how we can use it in our benefit. Okay. Okay. Great. So, when I click on this, what's going to happen is that this happened. What happened here? <laughs> so, essentially, any time that you fetch a resource by default, HTMX is just going to grab the entire resource and dump it inside the element that targeted this, uh, that triggered this, okay? So if I have, let's do a, another example. If I have an element, which in this case is this element, by default, if I add a method to it, HTMX will know, hey, okay, this means that whenever we trigger this element, you want to fetch this new resource, right? By default, all the elements use their native um, trigger, which means that if you're using a link tag, it means that when you navigate through it, so when you click it, it's going to trigger that. If you use a form, it means that whenever you submit the form, um, it's going to trigger the request. If you use an input, it means that whenever the input changes, whenever you type something in the input, it's going to request the, the resource. Okay, So essentially, if you don't define a specific trigger, it's always going to be the default trigger the default trigger of the element. And as a fallback, it just, it just uses a click trigger for everything. Okay, That's why I have just a div here. This is a single div with some text in it. And because I'm not specifying anything else, I'm just saying, hey, I want you to get this. It means that whenever we click on it, because it's the, the default trigger, it's going to grab this source, it's going to grab this resource, and it's going to dump it inside the same element, okay? So let's refresh the page and check it again. Here, I'm checking the element. Let me zoom in a bit, like that. And this, it's just a div. It's just a div that has the attributes, like that, and the content that has, for now, it's click me, okay? But when we get the new resource, it's going to dump that resource inside the same element, okay? So we click on it. And you can see how now the entire resource of the uh, has been replaced. Now, here's the gotcha. Check what happened here. We basically imported everything. So we imported, you can see if we go to the components page, we imported the page wrapper, the global styles, the main wrapper, everything, including all the script tags, all the script tags that are inside the body. So essentially grabs the entire body of the page and puts it in. Okay, right, this is not what we want to do, right? We just want to um, grab some bits of it. Now, here's 
maybe how you're already thinking, oh, that's why it probably makes sense to have a dedicated server, right? Because if we have this, whenever we request a new page like that, we are dumping the entire page inside. Obviously, if we had a server that just returned some small bits, the bits that we want to put inside, right, that would be more convenient. And you'll see how this is one of the use cases. But we can do something about this. Let's just go back to the basics because the next thing that we can use is HX select. Okay. And this plays a lot of in favor with us in the Webflow environment because in Webflow, we don't have a server by default. We just have Webflow that creates entire pages. So with HX select, what we can do is hey, I know that you are fetching this whole page. But actually, I don't want the whole page. I don't want you, uh, you dumping the whole page inside here. No, I want you to go ahead and grab me just an element that is inside this page, which is going to be this one. Okay. So all we have to do is identify this element, and we're going to give it an attribute. Or an attribute, sorry, it could be any CSS selector. It could be a CSS class. It could be an ID. It could be an HTML attribute. It could be whatever you want. Okay. So I'm going to use an ID. So imagine in this element, I'm going to call it, I don't know, like Tada, because I know that we're going to be using a, an element called Tada. <laughs> Knowing that HTMX is going to fetch the entire page, but instead of returning the entire page, it's just going to return the target of it, the selection that we've done. Okay. So let's try it. We're going to come here and we're going to say, let's just go back to the basics. HS select, we're going to do the same. So get me the resource, which is API components, like that. But also select me, select the tada element like that, okay? This is an ID. This is a selector for an ID. I could be using a CSS class if I wanted to. I could be using an attribute. I could do whatever I want. But in this case, I'm using the ID, ta-da, because I just want to grab this element in here that has an ID of ta-da, okay? So let's publish this super quick. And let's click on it boom we just got here now tada like that okay nice so far we, we we haven't done much like we're just clicking and populating a couple things but at least you're just trying to uh, starting to see how by just sprinkling a couple attributes on the page we can already start doing things that usually we require javascript to do right usually to do this you would have to write a script that fetches the site, parses with the DOM parser the, the entire document that it's returning, query is the specific element that you wanted to, grab that element and dump it in the original element that was clicked. That's a lot of code. That's a lot of JavaScript code. And here, we just used two attributes. That's nice. Here, these two. OK? OK, I'm going to move on. But before doing that, let me just check on the comments super quick. OK, 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 OK. Um, might be a bit of a topic, but could you please add some documentation or provide example on how to refresh GZEP for CMS load at the end of the session? Yeah, Retro, can you remind me this when we end the session? Because I'm probably going to forget it. Um, OK, I successfully placed my navbar with dynamic content on my Webflow 404 page thanks to HTMX. Drop down stopping working, though. Is this an HTMX limitation? That's probably related to Webflow, um, the Webflow library not restarting when you're doing this. We can talk about this, um, if not today, because I don't know if we're going to have enough time. We can talk it in the next sessions. But essentially, whenever you're doing um, populating dynamic content, if that new content relies on Webflow, like a dropdown, because a dropdown to open and close the dropdown, there's some JavaScript that Webflow adds to the site. So you probably need to tell Webflow, hey, please scan again the site, because this dropdown is new, and you need to handle it. But for that is the JavaScript API, so it's a bit more advanced. We're going to leave it for more um, more uh, in the future. Okay, 
it seems like Cloudflare's HTML rewriter might be a great way to generate HTML for this. <laughs> you know what, Wade? If you check my comments here, and if we go through everything that I wanted to talk about, the first thing that I want to suggest when we go more in depth is creating a full-blown application by using a reverse proxy with Cloudflare Workers and HTML rewriter. So yeah, wait, you are in the right track. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, oh yeah, Joel, thank you. You already answered Samuel. Nice. Okay, great. I think that we can move on. Perfect. Great. So, so far, we've done just a single thing, which is clicking on, a, on an element and then getting some resources and putting them um, somewhere. In this case, inside the same um, element that it's being triggered. But maybe you want to um, trigger it by doing something different. Imagine that maybe instead of waiting to click, you want to load this whenever we load the page or whenever we um, move the mouse over the element or whenever we, I don't know, um, focus the element with a tab key, whatever, okay? We can um, emit the, the requests based on custom triggers. In this case, we are going to be using the HX trigger attribute, okay? So if you come here, we're going to do the same thing. So HX get API components, and we're going to do the same. So it's going to be HX select, and we want to get the tada element. But not only that, I know I don't want to click on this. I want to populate me on page load like that. Okay. So we can just give it a trigger. So it's going to be trigger. And in this case, it's going to be load like that. Okay. You can do any kind of event. You could do mouse over. You could do drag. You could do focus. I don't know if there's a focus event. Is there a focus event? Can't remember now. Um, or you can do load, which is a custom event that HTML does. Okay. So when doing this, it's going to be the same. But now when we reload the page, let's do it again. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, if we reload the page, this is already um, replaced. Yeah, it happens pretty fast, obviously, because it's quite lightweight, everything. So on page load, it's happening. Now, I want you to notice something that it's a bit weird, probably, if you don't know exactly why it happens. I'm going to refresh the page a few times, and I'm going to wait on the comments to see if anybody notices it. OK? going to refresh. Let's see if somebody in the comments notices what the hell. Uh, it, it, it's odd, at least. I'm going to refresh again, checking. I'm going to just move the mouse a bit so maybe I can grab your attention to a place that does something weird. <laughs> when I reload the page, let's see. What's happening? I'm going to wait five seconds, and if nobody answers, then I'm just going to say the, the, the answer, OK? Anybody? No? No, I mean, the, the flash in the element, yes. But also, check what's happening. What's the original title of this page? It's basics, right? This is the original title. And when I refresh the page, the title is basics. But something is happening that it's changing the title to components. What the hell is happening here? Right? OK, so this is happening because HTMX, by default, whenever you fetch a resource, it's, it's going to grab some of the metadata that comes with that document, and it's going to update the current document. For example, the new page that we're grabbing, the page that's fetching, um, that it's fetching this, so let me show you fetch, this page contains, uh, dun, 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 one second, it contains inside the head some things, contains some metadata, and it also contains a title. This title, HTMX is updating it, as you can see here, like that, okay? So you have to be aware that there are some things that HTMX does whenever you grab a resource and put it on the page. You can avoid this, but just for you to know, 
you have to be aware of these things, okay? That's a gotcha. I wanted to let you know that there are more gotchas, but let's keep moving. So, so far we've done three things. We've grabbed a resource with a method. We've selected a specific bit of that resource to put it in the element that was triggering the request. We've also used a custom trigger. Now, the next thing that we can do is instead of populating me, instead of populating the, the, the trigger element, the one that it's triggering the request, maybe you want to populate something different. Usually that's gonna be the case. So when you wanna do that, there's a, an additional attribute that it's the HX target in here. Okay, with HX target, you can define a specific target to populate with the contents that are coming from the request, from the response actually. Okay, so we're gonna do the same. There's gonna be HX get, again, API components, gonna be quick. And we want to also HX select, and this is gonna be the ta-da element like that. And also, we want to populate it inside this element, okay? So this element, we're going to identify it. In this case, I have an ID here. So I just want to say HX target, and we're going to put the ID here. With this, essentially, we're saying, hey, put it inside the element that has an ID of basic target target, like that, okay? So let's go and do it in here. Oops. Come on, publish. It's a bit slowish today, Webflow. Maybe it's my connection. Gabe, is everything okay with my connection? Hopefully, yes. Checking the comments. Everything all right? Oh, they couldn't see the tab name, Gabe. That's why. Nobody was noticing. <laughs> okay. Anyways, okay. So uh, the 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 title of the the tab was was being updated before when I was talking about the the title. I apologize for that. I didn't know. Okay. So when we click on this, look what's happening. It's populating the element in here. Okay. Ta-da! Yay! Nice. Okay. So hold on. Let me check the comments if I'm missing anything. Uh, we can see the title. Yep. Noticed it. Sorry, I'm looking for something like this for a long time. That's so useful. I always have to look for JavaScript to, uh, for some easy actions. That's the thing. If you want to build a full-blown app, probably HTMX is going to be a bit tricky because just by sprinkling things, there's a lot of uh, logic that it's hard to express like that. But when you want to do simple things like sprinkling, just populating things when doing a simple event, doing something else, HTMX is pretty nice for it. Okay, let's move on because I want to show you more things. There are a lot of things that I want to do. So first of all, HX swap. This is another functionality. Remember that when we came here, what we're doing is grabbing an element and we are putting it inside the element like this. Okay, but maybe sometimes instead of just um, doing this, maybe you want to replace the entire element. So this element is the, the element that triggered the request, instead of dumping the response inside the element, maybe you want to replace everything. So you want to do this, where the new element, the new response, it's replacing the entire uh, trigger, okay? You can do this with the swap. Where is it? You can do this with the swap um attribute, okay? With this swap attribute, let me show you in the documentation, you can define where you want to put the content. By default, it's the inner HTML, so it's inside the target, but maybe you want to do the outer HTML, which is the, the, the entire target that you were, um, that, that was, that triggered the request. You can do it also before um, the beginning, after the beginning, before the end, after the end, which is based on the parent. You can do, um, a delete, nice, didn't know about this, but you can delete an entire target, or you can do nothing, which is also curious. <laughs> okay, but let's do the other HTML. So if you come here and we do uh, HX get, we can do API, and this API will be uh, components, components like that, and then we're gonna do HX select, 
and to select this time I am not going to be grabbing this tada element. I'm going to be grabbing this tada element. As you can notice, it's actually the entire thing, not just the content, but the entire thing, right? So if I do this, uh, and it's called tada swap. So let's go back to basics. Love this. Let's go back to basics. And we do select the tada swap like that. Okay, if I don't specify the swapping, check what happens. We're going to wait a few seconds. Come on, nice. Check what happens. Whoops. Tada swap. Come on, I did something wrong. Oh yeah, this. This is supposed to be an ID. Yep, like that. Let's do it again. One second. Come on. I'm going to take, let's uh, read comments. Neil, your publishing visual doesn't look like mine because this is an enterprise only feature. This is something that we um, we currently have at FinSuite. Don't ask me why, but we have access to this, probably because of some beta testing stuff. I'm not sure. I don't want to mess up. But it's something that it, by default it's by uh, for enterprise uh, customers. Okay, okay. So look what happens. We are populating the entire element inside, but we don't want to do that. We want this element to replace the entire content of it. Okay. So to do that, we can swap the content. So we're gonna say hx swap, and we're gonna say outer HTML. Is it one t or two t's? One second. One T, outer HTML. So instead of replacing the insides of it, it's going to replace the entire outside of it. So if we do it again, now it's going to happen just this. Okay, it looks like only the content changed, but actually the entire element changed with the new content. Nice. Okay, nice. More things that you should know. HTMX does hydration. I don't know if that's uh, the correct word for this, but the concept is that imagine that you are importing stuff, okay? You're doing this in here. This contains a bunch of directives. It contains a bunch of a content trigger, it contains a, a request target, et cetera, okay? This element, it can also contain things. Imagine that this element also contains some directives for HTMX. HTMX, it's smart enough that whenever we place the contents that are coming in a response, if those contents contain HTMX specific directives, those directives are going to be initialized whenever we place this content. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So imagine that we want to import this. Okay, it's the same thing, but it also contains some directives. Okay, it's not only the content with nothing else. It's some content with some extra HTMX directives that it's going to grab the same page and it's going to grab the Tera component like that. Okay. So when we do this and we put it in here, so let's go and grab it. So HX get API components and it's going to be HX select. And I believe that this is Tera enhanced because it has some enhancements. I call it like that. <laughs> And also, let's use the, the swap. I'm going to do hx swap, and I'm going to say after end, which means that I want to grab the content and put it after the end of this element. So it's going to place it down below. Okay. If we do this, and I, if I did it right with the correct names, let's hope for, for that. Um, when we click on the element, nice, it imports the new element. This new element, because it also has directives from HTMX, also works. Nice. So you can see how we can create a lot of interactivity by just composing things. We can grab some place from, uh, from here, which has some directives. That's uh, Those directives maybe also do some other stuff that brings in more directives. We can compose things to build interactive experiences, which is nice. Then we can click and ta-da. Great. OK. So before moving on, because I have a couple examples to show you of direct uh, things that we could do right now um, 
inside Webflow without requiring server. Let me just quickly check the comments. Uh, can we change triggers and targets, for example, on click, populate one element, and on hover, populate another element? Yes, you can do that, Himatsu. If you, if you want to have different triggers, uh, you've got the um, multiple triggers, which is just by using comma separated, I believe. So you can separate multiple triggers with a comma, and then each trigger you can filter it. So you can um, you can add modifiers. Obviously, you can add delay, you can add throttling, etc. You can filter those triggers. You can even use JavaScript inside here. Although I don't recommend it much because writing JavaScript inside here is probably not going to be fun. <laughs> and I think that you can also uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, the request with some conditions. I'm going to check that, Himansu, because I was pretty sure, but now that I'm thinking, I am not that sure now. So I'm going to check that, in the, and the next week I'm going to tell you um, how far we can go into you know making conditional logic with HTMX, because obviously this is nice because we're just sprinkling a bunch of directives, but the moment that you have a lot of uh, conditional logic with a lot of conditions, maybe it starts to get a bit more tricky. But probably there's a solution for it. I'm going to tell you next week. Uh, Danny is asking, in terms of performance, is this better than fetching with a JavaScript embed? Or is this just a nicer, simpler way to do that? It depends. Because the performance, it's mostly um, about the server that it's responding with the content than the actual JavaScript that you're writing. If you write JavaScript to do the task, to fetch the resource and populate it, that JavaScript that you're writing, it's probably going to be very similar at, as what HTMX is just doing under the hood, because HTMX is a JavaScript library that it's placed on your site and it's running JavaScript to power all these functionalities. So in terms of performance, I don't think that there's much difference. I think that the most difference is about how the, the server is responding, because it's not the same if it takes three seconds to respond and it responds with a huge document that has a lot of info, or if it takes 100 milliseconds and just responds with the small bits that you want to update on the page. It's, it's, it's a mix of things. It can be performant and it can be hugely um, unperformant, if that's a word, the, depending on the entire setup, not just because of you're using HTMX. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, and if you have more questions, let's we can keep discussing that. Great. So what we what can we do directly in Webflow with this? You've probably seen an example. Actually, I'm gonna do a shout out because like two weeks ago I saw some cool example that was nice and I thought, hey, this is cool. We should talk about HTMX. <laughs> and X that for example, you can just populate CMS stuff on any page. I believe that Matt Matt Evans has a video about this. I saw it around on Twitter. It's a cool idea. So let's let's do some real real live uh, scenario like this, following the same example. Imagine that we want to use HTMX to just populate a nested collection in Webflow. Okay, you don't need a server for that because the CMS collections from Webflow already are provided by Webflow. So Webflow it's kind of acting like our server. Well, it's it's actually acting up as our server. Okay, so we just want to use the principles of HTMX. We can say, hey, I want you for each of these items to grab me the page of that item, so the, the blog post of that item, grab some of the categories, tags of that page, and just dump them in here, okay? Let me show you what I mean. We've got a CMS page of blog posts, and inside each of the, the pages, we have just a nested collection, so a, a multi-reference collection, each blog post has a multi-reference collection that points to a few categories like this, right? So if we put these categories in the blog page, then we just need to use HTMX as we already did. So let's just use this. CMS demo in here, inside each of these items, I am going to add an embed tag, okay? Ideally, we would be able to just do it with the div and say something like um, HX, get, and here use this log. But the problem is that the slug is not enough because the slug it just has the 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 
the, the final path end, but it doesn't have the full path to the resource. So instead, we're just going to use a, an embed because we can write some custom HTML inside. And inside the embed, we just want to say, hey, I want a div like that. And we're going to use whatever we already talked about. So it's hxget. And this hxget, we want to go to the posts collection. And we want to grab the slug of the post. That's it. Okay. And we also don't want to grab the full post, um, the, the full page. We just want to grab the, the list of categories. So we're going to say HX select like this. And we're going to say, I think that it was categories list. Hopefully, it said it correctly. So if we do this, HTMX is going to uh, work its magic. It's just going to say, hey, okay, I need to go to that page grab the contents, grab the categories list, and put it inside here. OK, something is not right. So let's go ahead and check. One second. This should be categories list. Oh, no, it is right, but there's just one thing that it's missing. <laughs> and it's that we need to add a trigger to it because we want this to load on page load. So in here, trigger, it's going to be load, like that. That's it. On page load, grab the contents and put them in here. OK? OK, and still not working. Come on. What's missing? There is something missing here. Stay with me. Categories list, yes. Hold on a second. Is it fetching it? It isn't fetching it. So HX trigger, HX get, HX select, categories list, post slug. Am I publishing things? I did not publish it. Now we're talking. OK. <laughs> so I, I hadn't published it. But great. So. That's it, same mentality. Page load, grab the resource, dump it in here. That's it. Super nice, super simple. Okay, let's do another quick example. Imagine that we want to have a search results of my page. Okay, I want to have an interactive search form for my page. All we have to do is just use the, the search, search results from Webflow. Remember that this is something that is baked inside Webflow. OK, and if we inspect this, let's open this search demo for a second. When we use a search, this is a search component from Webflow. A search component, it's just a form like that. OK, so we've got a form. And this form, it's sending us to the search page with a query parameter. Let's check it. If we do this and let's type test and we submit this search form, by default, I'm not using HTMX now. I'm just, just using Webflow. It submits the form with a GET request with a query param. I don't know if you can see it. Can you? Yes, you can. So it's just loading this page, the search page, with the query of what we want to query, right? In this case, it was test. So we can just use this. We can say, hey, instead of um, redirecting me to this new page, Let's progressively enhance the site with HTMX. And instead of navigate to the page, let's grab the page and just put it in here. Okay? So we've got a form. And remember that by default, because we have a form, if we add a trigger, it's going to mean that um, it will listen for submit events. Okay? So we're going to define this as HX get. And we're going to say forward slash search, which is the, the search page from Webflow. That's it. The cool thing is that this in here, the input has a name of query. OK? And this is very important. I know that it's pretty late already, but this is a core concept that you should understand. Whenever we are sending a request, that request could just go plain without any parameters, or it could include data, right? In this case, I want to send the request with the data of my query. And this data of my query it's just passed as query params in here, like that, OK? Any input that you have inside the form, 
it's going to act as a parameter. So each input, it's going to use the name of the input, in this case, it's query, as the parameter key, and the value of the input as the, the value of that, that parameter. Okay. So when I submit this, it means that this form is being submitted with a parameter called query with the value of test, like that. This happens by default because that's how forms actually work without HTMX. There are more attributes that we could talk about in, a, in another session that allow you to include these kind of things also without using inputs. So imagine that you have just a div instead of an input, but you want to include some parameters. You can still do it with some attributes, okay? But for now, we're submitting the form. We're sending this query, okay? So let's not navigate to the page, but instead fetch it. So with this, that's what we're already doing. But I don't want to replace the contents of this form when we get the response. I want to replace the contents of this empty div in here. So I'm going to say, this is the search results here. So I'm going to say, hey, the target of the response, it's the search results div. Also, the search results page, I don't want the entire page. I just want the list, this list in here. OK, so this list, we also defined it as search results. So we're going to select it from here. So we would just say HX target, yep, but also HX select. And it's going to be the same ID, OK? Don't be confused. This ID is from the search page, not from this page. OK, that's it. If we do this, one second. Let's wait until it publishes. If we do this, essentially, it's going to grab the resource and dump it in. Essentially, the same mentality, the same workflow that we're using for everything. OK. Why is it so low today? Come on, Webflow. Nah. Let's try it. I'm going to do this. Test. Yay. We've got it here. Nice. What do you think? Um, we can improve this a bit more. How? We can use it loader. We can use an indicator so in HTMX. You can find it here in the documentation, but essentially there's a way of defining an element that is just going to be visible whenever we um, perform a request, right? In this case, we've got a combination, a combination of two different classes. The HTMX indicator, which is setting an element um, to just not being visible, so check if I refresh the page, the element, the loader, it's not visible. So that's that's by default, that's provided by HTMX. Also, HTMX can combine with an HTMX request class. And when we add this class to the element, it's going to show that element while a request is happening. Okay. In this case, the request is being triggered by the form. So what we have to do is use another attribute that it's HX. Um, indicator indicator and instead of being the indicator in this element we say hey the indicator is somewhere else it's actually in here and this element i've identified it with just loading spinner id so let's just say hey the indicator it's this loading spinner id that's it that it means that while the request is being performed it's going to grab that htmx request class and it's going to put it in here so hopefully if it works nice, we're going to see how, yeah, the loading spinner, yay, it's showing every time that we are submitting the form and performing the request. Cool. OK. I love this. Nice. Love it, too. OK, let me check the comments. So. That's good that there, there is no conflict with the same IDs. Was the no category stalled that way due to Webflow CMS responding with not items? OK, let me go from top to bottom. So Himansu is asking about the, the styling of the CMS items. The styling is actually coming from Webflow, this styling is in here. So if we check the, the page in here, each, um, each of these tags is just styling based on a CMS property. It's just HTML and CSS, and because we are already using it here in Webflow, it's just grabbing the content and putting it. The styles are preserved, which is nice. 
If, was that the question, Imansu? Let me know. Okay, so Glenn, that's good that there's no conflict with the SEM IDs. I don't know exactly what you mean by that because I've been talking a lot, but that's good. <laughs> if, if, if that's actually a question, Glenn, let me know. But I think that we just agree that it works pretty nice out of the box. Say, so, Caleb, it's saying, I may have missed that since I joined the lead, but can you target other attributes instead of IDs? Yes, you can. You can use any kind of CSS selector. If we go back here, imagine that instead of using loading spinner, we say uh, data element loading spinner, like that. You can to totally do that. So instead of doing an ID, you could do this data element equals to loading spinner, like that. And I messed up this, like that. And this is a valid, oops, hmm. Maybe this is not valid by Webflow. It's a bit weird. Uh, can uh, it should work, but the Webflow UI it's not helping. <laughs> so yes, it would work, but. Um, Check out how this attributes UI here in Webflow works because it's a bit weird, but it should work, yes. Okay, um, Himansu is asking, does the HX attribute uh, for this need to be on the form element or submit action? Um, okay, let's, oh, single quotes will work in the attribute box. They updated it last year. Thank you, Joel, nice. So you can use it with uh, single quotes. Himansu, uh, what you're asking, it's nice to talk about inheritance. So in HTMX, there is a concept of inheritance like that. And inheritance means that whenever you define an attribute okay, to an element, this attribute is also inherited by all the children of it. Not all the attributes, but most of them. Okay, So imagine that I'm adding some kind of um, attribute here. All the children will... Um, will inherit that. So in the case of a form, I believe that um, you can have a submit button in here, you could have a, a another button, but if you want to add it to the form, then it's gonna be inherited down to to all the elements, I believe. Okay, we should actually check the uh, triggers, 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 HX trigger. Is it inherited? Oh, it is not inherited. Okay, so in in this case, no. Um, in the case of, of a form, you have to add it to the form if you wanna listen for submit events, okay? Because it's not inherited. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do the recap of everything and then let's just talk about next steps because there's a lot of things that I wanna talk about. And obviously today we don't have enough time. So far, we've just done this in here. But there's way more that I want to talk about. Plus, we can go more deeper and we can build an uh, example, you know, a, a, an actual real live demo. Okay. So, so far we've talked about HTMX, which is nice. It lets you sprinkle some progressive enhancement. You can, it, you can progressively enhance a site with some functionalities that are picked inside your browser, but with more expanded features like fetching the data and replacing the contents. Nice. We've learned how to. How does HTMX work? What's the principle behind it? How it fetches the data, how it looks for a target, and how it injects that, that data into that target. We've seen a bunch of use cases. We've seen how to install it into Webflow. We've seen some of the basics of it. Okay, We've seen a couple of gotchas, but we have more gotchas to talk about. It's going to be next week. And next, I want to talk about how to use HTMX, not only directly with Webflow, just with the Webflow project, but also in pair with a custom server. I actually had my server ready here to write code, but obviously one hour is very short period of time to talk about everything. So it's gonna be next week, but in the next week, we're gonna take this HTMX demo and we're not only gonna use the data that it's being provided by Webflow, by these pages that we've built, but instead, we're also gonna be um, writing a server that takes some data and responds with some HTML for the HTML project. Nice. Um, we've also, can talk about a lot of things. We can talk about how to reverse proxy the project and 
make the full project being managed by just HTMX. So for people who are looking for, example, server-side rendering, this could be some cool thing for you. We can talk about real-time. Um, HTMX can handle real-time events, it can handle web sockets, it can handle server-sent server events. We can talk about CSS transitions, animations. There's We can do animations with HTMX whenever we're changing contents in the page. We can talk about the JavaScript API that has HTML, uh, the HTMX provides. We can talk about the, the events that allow you to expand how HTMX behave. We can talk about configuring, which allows you to change some of the default behaviors of HTMX. We can talk about combining HTMX with Alpine.js or uh, WIST. We can talk about a lot of things. So I'm already thinking that this series of live streams can be quite long. <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll focus a bit and people will not get bored of it. Okay, so before before wrapping up, I'm just gonna say a couple of things. First of all, is that I am very grateful for everyone who's still here with me because I'm checking people in the live stream and I'm seeing still uh, 70, uh, 71 persons, 71 people looking at the live stream and we've been talking for one hour and 10 minutes. That's quite a lot. So thank you. Thank you very much. I really love this. I love that there's a lot of people interested in just learning more ways on of enhancing Webflow sites. Love it. And next thing, obviously, is that the next sessions are going to be a bit more in depth. So you can expect those sessions to be for FinSuite Plus. Okay, remember that we are um, um, combining open sessions like today's session with FinSuite Plus sessions, which is just a private Zoom meeting where everyone has a chat, everyone can ask questions. You can even open the camera with the mic if you want to talk uh, with me about anything. You can showcase anything and we can go more in depth with real use cases of people. So if you want to build something with HTMX, but you have some doubts and you want to come in a private session with me and just ask those questions and hopefully I will be able to address them. Come next Friday, okay? We're gonna do it with the FinSuite Plus sessions. Um, and that's it. We're gonna be doing this all year. So again, thank you everyone for coming. I'm very happy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm missing anything, but I believe not. So see you all guys. Thank you.